Hey Awesome Doodle fans, I am here with Wendy Taylor and Wendy is a certified uh, dog trainer. She is a graduate of the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Academy. Uh -huh. yep. um, she trains dogs for a living and uh, you've probably heard me say this before but uh, I have Wendy come over quite often whenever I get a new puppy. I consider myself a decent puppy trainer, a decent dog trainer, but it's not something that I do for a living and I make a lot of mistakes. And whenever Wendy comes over, she uh, she corrects me. She kind of okay. she kind of tells me what I'm doing wrong and, you know, tells me the right way uh, to train a puppy. So, I had Wendy come over today um, to help me work with Humphrey. So, Humphrey is a uh, Three and a half month old poodle. Uh, he's a mini. He's going to be uh, an awesome doodle daddy. And um, you know, like most poodles and Aussies, he's a very, very Velcro dog. He wants to be with me all the time. He follows me all over the house. And um, Wendy, I'm sure that you've have experience with this kind of dog. That yeah. they just, they just don't want to be without without me. So the problem that I have is I cannot put him in this crate and then go walk around the house or leave the house without him yelping. He barks really loud. He's a little bit anxious in there, and so uh, I want your advice as to how to... Get him to be comfortable in the crate? Yeah. Even if you're not around? Even if I'm not around. That's the thing. Yeah. And he... He will actually go in this crate by himself with the door open. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm sitting... If he can see me. But as soon as I close that door... Search. So even so, if you're here, the door's open. He'll go in it. Yeah. And he'll will he stay in it and just hang out? Yeah, he'll he'll take a nap in there. Okay. If you're here, mm -hmm. but if you're not here, he does not want to be in it, whether the door's open or not. Right. And at night, um, I have another crate in the bedroom. He crates up. He sleeps all night and doesn't make a peep. Okay. So we want to create value for the crate itself, and we want him to. Uh, to find that this is all good things happen when he's in here. Mm -hmm. And so we're creating um, this to be a fun place to be. So what I'm doing right now is I have this strategically placed in front of the, the crate mm -hmm. because I want him to either look on it or look at it or step on it. Okay, so he just looked at it. And um, I want him to start to, um, I'm building value for this right now, for the bed, for him to, uh, to be on the bed. And then eventually I'm gonna, once we get him wanting to go back to the bed, that he um, realizes that it's that when he steps on it, um, that's what's getting getting the reinforcement. Okay. Then I'm going to put it inside the crate, and then we can, you know, that way it's a natural progression. He's going to want to go inside the crate because that's where the bed is, and when he gets on the bed, that's when he gets reinforced. And okay. eventually, he's going to realize it's when I'm on here is when I get hear that click and get the reward. So step one, you're just trying to get him to go. On this little bed, exactly. not necessarily in the crate. Exactly, exactly. So, right now, he's kind of looking for reinforcement in lots of places because there was a lot of activity going on and there's still noises that he's hearing. Okay, so um, let's let's pretend that he's he's okay. finding rewards on this little mat. Yep. And, and we get him going on his mat, and he's recognized that the mat gets some treats. Yep. Then what's the next step? So. So this is actually the next step. He actually sat on the mat, and that and that's when I'm going to actually treat him for being on the mat several treats in a row, which now he gets off of it. Um, but um, we're, that's what we're looking for is duration on the mat. And, okay. Um, so you know, so that's building value in the mat. All things good things happen when he's on the mat. He just got too much other reinforcement going on. There you go. Good job. So what you know, ideally again. 
training is a progression, so it could take an hour. Um, yeah. You know, you're going to have to just edit the video, but um, to get where where we need him to be now uh -huh. is that you know, ideally when I so I want to get him off of the mat so that I can get him back on it. Search. So I throw the treat away, and now what I'm looking for is him to say, oh, oh no, I want to be over there. I want to be on the mat because that's what's getting me the rewards. Okay. So that's, I'm looking for him to think and realize and make the connection. It's all about this. Not just that I'm luring him, you know, okay. there, right? You want him to make that decision for himself. Exactly. It's his right. choice. So, so what you said there a minute ago, this isn't something we can do in five minutes. You know, no. This is a progression of a step one, step two, step three kind of thing. Exactly. And it takes time and some dogs will pick it up maybe quicker than others, mm -hmm. but every dog will learn it if you're consistent about your criteria. Mm -hmm. so, now, do you use any kind of command to go to your spot or go to your place or not, anything like that? Not until after we get um, the behavior reliably. Right. So you don't want to start putting a keyword to the behavior until you know 80% of the time they're going to do behavior without a cue. Because the words don't mean anything exactly. to him. Exactly. Exactly. Alright, so let's pretend we've got him doing this. Then step two is we put this in the crate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he's not going to do very good at this, but we're just going to try it anyway. Yeah, well, okay, Oops. <laughs> so we throw, throw the treat and it bounces out. So, so, yeah, so, so now that he's in there, yeah. now do we keep throwing the treats in the crate or out here? So, yeah, so now we can build value for, um, so he wants to go in there, and that actually bed is not big enough for him, so I'm going to go ahead and switch it out to one that is more um, suitable for him, Okay. which is just a blanket that I've got folded up, and uh, this is just to make a section of the crate comfortable, Okay. and here he comes back, let's see if we can get him to just volunteer to go in the crate, he looked at it, so search. There you go. So I'm throwing the treats on the bed. Oh, you still didn't see it, silly. There you go. Good boy. So give him time to go ahead and, and chew that one. And then I'm going to feed him. So I gave, her, gave him several treats while he was in there on the bed. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying that we're building value for him to be on there. And so now he went away, but then he, went, then he came back. It's like, okay, you know, I wanted to go check out what was happening over there. Um, so this, this is more than I've ever even done with him. Oh, really? You, you know, because, you know, right now we're down here by the crate with him. We're building value in this crate. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in my head, I just think I can just put him in the crate and go to the store and he's going to be okay in there. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't, exactly. I think a lot of people have that uh, impression that they should just automatically want to be inside the crate and, you know, and be okay mm -hmm. staying in there because there's a bone in there, there's food in there, whatever. It, and it's it just, it's not going to be something that they're going to automatically want to do. Right. You have to make it, you have to, um, you know, like I keep using the words, build value. You have to create a positive association for their being inside there. So it's very important to um, condition them to want to be in there. And that's all we're doing right now. So he's fine going in there. Every time he goes in there, mm -hmm. uh, something good is happening. So, you know, I've, I've probably conditioned him to hate his crate already because you know how I told you he wants to be with me all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, during the day, you know, if I put him in that crate and close the door, that's because I'm leaving the house to go to the grocery store or something. There you go. Yeah. So I'm here all the time because I work from home, obviously. But when I leave the house, he has to go into this crate. Okay. So he's abandoned. So that's a really good point. And um, I'm glad that you brought that up because that's another uh, thing that people do accidentally. Uh, I'm going to wait for him to just choose to go in it okay. um, on his own and then when, anytime he goes into the crate, and that's what I'm looking for, he's got free roam in this house right now and so what I'm going to, I'm just waiting for him to come back and choose to go in there and every time he does, he's going to get rewarded for it. Okay. And that is though, what you just said, it's very important to not only make it that any time that the, the only time they go in the crate or are in the crate is when something undesirable to them happens such right. that they get Me left in, in. Yeah, they get left in there alone. 
So, so it is important to um, to do this um, while you're here, and you know, it's right there. He's offering to sit. Over. I know, isn't he good? He's like, you know what? There's really good things happening here. I'm going all over this house looking for other things to do, but in yeah. reality, I think I might as well just hang out here because there's more good stuff happening here. And he's so really he, smart, but he has a short attention span because he's only four months old. Yeah, well, that's very he's that's very understandable. Um, so what about toys in the crate? Do you, do you recommend putting toys as, in the crate? As long as it's not something that they could um, chew into pieces that they would choke on, okay. you know, un unsupervised. Okay. Um, so you just have to be careful. But y the other thing you can use is like a Kong filled with, like if, when you have to go, because there's times you're going to have to put the dog, maybe you you haven't gotten it to a point where the dog loves being in the crate yet, but you've got to go get groceries, so you yeah. have no choice. Right, right. And that's understandable. And that's where I am right now. Yeah, that's going to happen. So in those cases, my recommendation would be using a calm filled with peanut butter. Put you know, put it in the freezer so that it, it's frozen and it takes them a lot longer to you know go through it. Gives them something to do. In yeah, there. something positive. Yeah. Give them, so that's the thing. You want to create their experience inside the crate as. A positive experience. Mm -hmm. So for those periods of time, maybe a bully stick would do the same mm -hmm. thing. So something that would last a while, but give give them something to do that they're going to enjoy while they're in there. Yeah. Right. So eventually, you do that enough times, and you make you know make sure that every time that they go in the crate, they're rewarded. Whether the it's that you ask them to go into it, or you just turn around and you see that they chose Come on, to go okay. in. Come on. Then you just uh, you know reward them and make sure it's a positive experience, and eventually they're going to want to go in there and be in there and stay in there. They're going to be fine staying in there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, going to have lots of lessons on step one, lots of lessons on step two, and then what's step three? Is um, that where we start closing the door on them? Right. Exactly. What I'm going to look for, I'm going to have to stand up for this. Okay. So I dropped that in there so that at least incentivized him. He can smell that one a lot better. Yeah. So this is a little bit higher value treat. I just, um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to just step on this. So, so ideally, here's what I'm going to do is he's in there. I want him to get used to uh, having the door closed. And now what I want to do is condition him to sit before I let him out. Okay. And... Good boy, Humphrey. Yeah. So he went into a sit, and so I put that, and now I'm going to feed, and I'm going to feed him kind of high, and ideally we want him to be in the back. And the reason for that is that when you go to open door, you don't want him rushing out. You want right. him to, you know, be back further so that if in fact he does start rushing out, you can shut the door again mm -hmm. to prevent him from doing that. And so. So that would be really the next step is to, is to uh, condition that when you put your hand on the door, that becomes the cue for him to sit, to wait for you to open the door and give him permission to go out. Okay. So now he's actually being really good. I'm going to go ahead and treat him again in the sit position. And then so this is a this is a good this is a good thing to point out here. The difference in the values of these treats. You know, he's he's really trying harder. With the second treat that you have up. Yeah, it's, and I just, he's so funny, he's not finding when I throw it in there. Um, there you go. So yeah, that's a good point. I'm using two different types of treats. There's a higher value um, to this one that I'm using currently. And um, there's, in training, you want to be strategic even about the va level of value of treats that you're using. So uh -huh. I'm, I'm wanting him to find more value being in here um, than being out there. So this is no. This is progress already. Typically, when I put him in the crate, the instant I close that door, I can see him start to get anxious and he'll paw at the door. Is that right? Yeah. See, he's yeah. He's like, I'm just hanging out here. It's actually not a bad place to be. So he's he's not seeming like he's nervous or anxious, you know, by be, just being in there. Yeah. So it's just you know you can see it's just a matter of. Creating an association that good things happen when I'm in here, and so therefore there's a, there's a reason why I want to be in here because it's, it's a fun place to be. So we're we're conditioning him 
yeah. to associate the cray with treats. Yeah, with good things, exactly. There's someone growling over there. So I'm just standing on his leash because I'm going to go ahead and treat him for coming out. But what I really want him is to then want to hurry up and go back in. Now, is it true that we shouldn't physically put the dog in the crate? We should let the dog walk into the crate, right? Ideally, yes, you're wanting the dog to learn to get in the crate. Maybe and I'm not crate. even, right, and now, right now, I'm just going to sit and I'm going to stand here and wait for him to make a choice where he's like, okay, I know that you've got more treats in your hand. I really like those treats. What do I need to do to get another one? Okay. And well, we kind of skipped step one and step two, so he might not get this real quick. Right. Yeah, but we're, we'll we're, see. We're, we're not developing each one of the steps to the, to the degree that they need to be, but we're just giving a kind of a really yeah. quick blanket state. But you can see what I'm doing here is I'm not cueing him, I'm not giving him any kind of clues as to what I'm looking for. I'm just waiting for his decision. And he's going to, he, I'm asking him to figure out what, what I'm looking for. He's and, so close. Yeah, he's, you know, he, you can tell he's trying to think about it. He's like, see, I've trained it? him to do this. Oh, I've trained him to, to do him. a default sit. Yeah. Oh, good. That's good. So whenever I have treats, this is what he does. Yeah, and that's good. That's good that you get that, but it's not the behavior I'm looking for right now. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just looking for something different. So now it's a matter of him figuring out what it what it is that's going to earn the reward. Well, he's sniffing in there for treats. Yeah, but he's been in there long enough that I'm. That's not quite good enough. I want him, I want him in there altogether. Yeah. And I think I'm going to get it eventually, but I've got my foot on his leash so that he can't just go all over the place. So see, there we finally got him in there. And I'm going to go ahead and shut the door just so that we can try again. Oops. Let's see if we can get a sit. Oh, I want the cue. Yes, good boy. The cue of the hand on the door should be that means to sit. Okay. And then I get to open the door. He stays in the sit until until I release him, and then I actually want to give you a release word, which he doesn't know, but I'm going to go ahead and use one. Break. Oops. So I said break, and I threw a treat, actually dropped a treat, okay. <laughs> to get him out. And now I want him to go back in there, but I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to see if he can figure it out. It was a quick look. He's making good eye contact. Yeah. See, Look at that. Out, I figured out that out. Good boy, Humphrey. Yeah. So he went in there all by himself. He didn't, I didn't cue him. I didn't ask for it. He just figured out, oh yeah, so this is where all the good things are happening. He, when he walks in there on his own and gets the tree, then he puts the connection together. Exactly. And that's when you get a two-way conversation, and that's what I always look for. I'm looking to create a conversation. I want him asking me questions. What do you want me to do now? Yeah. What can I do to earn your next reward? And that creates that level of um, teamwork, you know? The puppy yeah. is um, all excited. He's engaged. There he goes in, again. Yep, he's engaged in the process, in the game, whatever the game is that you're trying to teach him. And he's willing to learn, and, um, and then you can keep building on that. So will do it again. What a good boy! Such a good boy! You let me, don't you? You are such a good boy. Break! So we're just going to wait and see what choice he makes. Wow. There you go! What a smart boy! You see, this is this is what I don't know. Like these are the things that I don't know how to do with the dog. And when you come here and you show me, it seems so easy to do it now that you've shown me. But until until somebody shows me, I just don't know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I say a lot of times that great dog training is somewhat counterintuitive to the way we think as humans. You know, they just yes. And it, there I use the marker word yes instead of the clicker. Um, because we, you know, we, we don't think the same way they do. But, but yeah. if you think about it, you're such a good boy. If you think about it this way, dogs are always, they're going to do with reinforcing. So they're always getting reinforcement somehow, whether it's self-reinforcement or reinforcement from 
the what you're uh, creating. Like if he's in there and he's barking, and we're talking to him, be quiet, Humphrey. That's reinforcement. Yeah. Just because it's attention. Yeah. Good boy. So you can see he wants to be in there. He'll come That's out and goes back in. Yeah. So now I know this is really pushing it, but what's the next step after this? You know, yeah, we can get him to walk into his crate. But as soon as we close the door and leave the room, he's going to flip out again. Right. So, so I know we won't get all the way there in this lesson here, but w give us the steps. Yeah. So, yeah. The, so the next step is to create a little bit of distance. So in everything that you teach dogs, you, there's, we call it the three Ds. You said to good boy. So it's duration, distance, and distraction. So your duration, you're looking for him to get in there, be in there, and stay in there until you give him permission to come out okay. for longer distance, for long, longer duration. So maybe it's, you know, two to five seconds initially, five to ten seconds, you know, up to thirty seconds. So you want to increase the duration that he's comfortable being so, in there. So, he's, so he gets yes. in there, yep. and then we're going to close the door, yep. and then and just leave it closed we walk away for... And then, but not out of his eyesight, right? Just yeah, walk around the room. Exactly, right. So eventually, well, in, you know, initially as you're training, maybe like we've been right here, but now it's going to be a matter of stepping away just a little bit, mm -hmm. and then seeing if he can be okay being in there. Again, I'm going to just go ahead and open the door and reward him for staying in the sit, even though the crate is open, the gate is open. If he were to come out without me releasing him, I would just shut the door. But he's being a really good boy and saying, I think I'm supposed to just stay in here. Yeah. Now, Rick. Now, the mistake that I make is I try to go way too fast, right? Yeah. Exactly. I, I get him in there, I close the door, he's good, and then I like leave the room, and exactly. then he panics. Exactly. So, good boy. Exactly. It's a progression. You have to take it in little steps at a time. You can't expect to go from kindergarten to college and jump in between right. all the rest of the grades. Right. So, yes, you have to um, take it in. Um, you, you're increasing the level of difficulty for the dog slowly and gradually over time, and you don't want to make it always harder um, without making it easier in between. Right. So, because they'll get frustrated. Like, if you just go from this step to this step to this step to this step, mm -hmm. eventually they're going to say, you know what, that's too hard, I'm tired of this game. So, yeah. you want to go here and then here and then go back here and <coughs> here. Make it a little bit harder each time, but then make it easy so that they stay engaged and uh, stay having fun with the game. Mm -hmm. So he's still very much engaged. Again, he's, he's got a leash on him, but I'm not holding him here. You know, he's happy to be here. Of course, right now he's not. Um, he's you know, kind of, yeah, but he's, as soon as he does what I want, I'm going to reward him. So I didn't ask. I mean, I, I just went ahead and didn't expect him to sit, but I bet you he'll sit even though I'm not paying any attention to him, he'll probably sit or he'll come out, you know, he's yeah. going to go back in, he's getting the Try idea. Try different things to right. get, get the treat. Right, he's still engaged, he's having fun, he knows I've got treats, he really likes these treats, and he's starting to figure out that it's when he's in there that he's getting all these treats. Okay, so so once we get him in there mm -hmm. and, we, and we start to step away, mm -hmm. how, what's the signals we need to look for to know when we're trying, when we're pushing him too fast? Um, like, like if he starts to get anxious in the crate, or... right? Yeah. So yeah, when he, when the dog is um, displaying levels of like, behaviors of anxiety um, or frustration, you know, you don't you don't want to push them beyond uh, beyond the point in which it's fun. But he's still having fun. I'm further away now. He went ahead and went back in there. Yeah. Because it, he's, even though I'm talking to you, he's like still realizing that there are things that I can offer, the behaviors that I can uh, create that is going to right. earn me a reward. And w one thing that I learned early on, uh, this is something that I learned from Kiko Pup's mm -hmm. YouTube channel, mm -hmm. is that dogs offer behaviors. Yeah. So so they figure out what works to get the treats. And then they offer those behaviors as default behaviors all the time. Yep. And the things that I taught, like Winnie and Minnie Poochie, when they were three months old, they still they still offer those behaviors yeah. today. Yeah. They'll cycle. They'll sit. They'll lay down. They'll play dead. They'll do all these tricks to yeah. try to figure out what I'm looking for. Exactly, because there's a history of rewards for those behaviors. Yeah. So now you can see he is offering to go back in there, even though I'm further away. 
So okay. we've, we've increased the level of difficulty for him, um, but he's still understanding this is where I'm getting the, the reward, reinforcement. Okay. So, and he's happy to be in there. He's, he's not, you know, being forced to be in there. He's actually saying, I want to be in here because he knows that's where he's getting what he's mm -hmm. wanting. So, so he's associating this credit now with treats. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, he knows I'm over here. I've got the treats in my hand. He could come over here and ask me for one, but I'm not going to give it to him because that's not what I'm looking for. So he's going to, he's got the ability to go wherever he wants to. And mm -hmm. eventually, I bet you he's going to go back in there um, because he's going to really, you know, he, if he wants another one, he realizes yeah. that's how he's going to get it. Right. So, yeah, it's just a progression. You keep, and so you just keep. Increasing the level of, Good the boy, level of difficulty by increasing the duration, increasing the distance, and then increasing distractions. Which and so in, in this case, and what what a distraction would be would be you're such a good boy uh, would be you know I should be able to do some dunking dads yeah. or you know run all away around other dogs running around. Right. If he can sit there and stay there until he's released, even though there's a bunch of chaos going around going yeah. on then you know he understands the value of the crate and he understands the cue to stay there yeah. be there when you've yeah. asked him to until he's given permission to come out. So so as you can see, he's coming out of his own will. He's not just waiting and staying until I cue him to come out. Yeah. But I haven't worked on that. Yeah, I've worked on it sporadically, mm -hmm. but that would be something I would want to build up to is um, okay. is that he stays in there. Regard If I ask him to go in there, right now I'm not even cueing him to go in there, but if it was something that I cued him do, to do, I would expect that he would stay there until I asked him to come out. Okay. But right now we're not really doing that. We're just simply wanting him to get... A whole lot of reinforcement for going in there, being in there, and staying in there. Walking so in there he, with his own four feet. Yeah, and not you know, being forced to. Go. Right, exactly. That he wants to be in there, even if I'm far away. That he wants to be in there because he knows that's a good place to be. And if your dog isn't super interested in the treats like he was at first. Get a different it, kind of treat. Right, exactly. So higher value treats would be maybe some um, string cheese or, yeah. you know, turkey. Some dogs are motivated just by their kibble. Right, my dog is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's very motivated by her uh, her meals, you know, and she gets all yeah. excited about that. But some dogs, yeah, you have to go to a higher level of um, value treat. And so turkey hot dogs would be good. Of course, steak, you know, yeah. chicken, anything like that would be a very high value. So I think that's good for this for this lesson. Um, next time you come over we can work on get him in getting him in there with the door closed for longer periods of time. Okay. Awesome. What a good boy. Good boy so Humphrey. He went kind of around it and, uh, he, and did. he knows the treats are in the bags up here but he ultimately went chose to go in there and now he's just sitting down and waiting. Good boy, huh? You're such a good boy. Come here, Humphrey. Let's say bye to everybody. Say thanks, Wendy. <laughs> You're welcome. I'll see you next time. <laughs> okay. Over and out. <laughs> You're so sweet. You're a good little student. Yes, you are. And you're having fun. That's the most 